Absolutely. Gareth has always been underestimated mm -hmm. throughout his life. And I think, you know, when he was released by uh, Southampton at 16, they sort of missed a trick there. But people forget, you know, he played 55 times for England. He captained Palace, he captained Aston Villa and he captained Middlesbrough. Mm. You don't do that if you're a soft guy. Didn't you at one point suggest he, he had to shape up or he should go and be a travel agent? <laughs> well, what had happened is we'd, we'd played the British Army at Reading and uh, we'd lost the game. I mean, for us to lose to the Army was just ridiculous and I absolutely went berserk after the game. When I looked out the window, Gareth was going around shaking people's hands and saying, look, you know, thanks for having us. And I said, Gareth, look, seven of those guys are in the SAS. You don't think they go around shaking hands with people when they kill them. <laughs> so following on from that, just got him in the office the next day, sat him down, and he was a real decent lad, wanted to do well. I, I got that and I said, look, Gareth, do yourself a favour, become a travel agent rather than become a footballer. Oh, I'm and so I, glad he didn't take your I, advice. Well, but I think it was a, a slight turning point. It was a nudge in the right mm -hmm. direction. Oh. And it was only a nudge. You were goading him. Goading him a little, and to test him a little bit into how he went. But he, yeah. he, he grabbed that and, as I say, as my captain, he epitomised what mm -hmm. the team was about. I'm sure you wouldn't admit to underestimating him, but what was he like at school? Gareth uh, at school was, as you've heard Alan really describe him, uh, he was understated, uh, he was a natural leader in a very quiet sort of way. He would never say anything until he'd thought about it carefully. And so when he did say something, it was authoritative and people listened to him. And he had a good circle of friends, he was admired because he was an excellent sportsman. Uh, even at, at that age, and he knew that his future lay in football. Uh, he was good academically, but he'd already, I think, decided at the age of 15 or 16 that football was the route he wanted to take. Which, looking back, it's quite a risk, really. I I'd mean, a lot of her teachers would be saying, oh, do you sure you want to leave school at 16 and mm. pursue something which a lot of people want to do and not everyone gets to be Gareth Southgate, do they? No, they don't, and, and you're absolutely right. That, that's what schools tend to do. They, they, they like to hang on to people uh, if they show academic potential uh, and see that develop. But I think it was entirely right uh, in retrospect that he took a different decision and decided that he wanted to pursue his professional footballing life. And it's much to the, uh, uh, yes, advantage of us as a footballing nation, that he decided to do that, I think. Any well, words of advice? I, I think Gareth gets enough advice of who should be playing where and everything else, but I, I think, you know, I, I do try and sort of reassure him. I mean, he wouldn't... In, I don't think he'd enjoy all of this, actually. He sent me a funny text the other day saying, Alan, I've got a really warm feeling about everything at the moment. I've never had so much praise. But he said, actually, I need a bit of aggression inside me. Yeah. Tell him to become a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I never want to put him down. The, the, no, the, no. the truth is that he's, he's got this team now playing as a club team. It's the yeah. first time. Yes. He's one of the few managers we've had that actually sees it as a full-time job. Yeah. You know, whereas when we've had foreign managers, Fenn, Capello, they, you know, pretty much they used to come in four weeks before the game, talk to the lads, four weeks after go home. Yeah. Look, he's and abandoned. actually and abandoned. Yeah. Whereas he's actually seen the bigger picture of yeah. looking after the team, making sure that everybody else is right. His planning has been absolutely meticulous. And he's he is one of these got sort of guys. If he wasn't successful in this he'd definitely be successful in something else, you know. He's, he's not one-dimensional. No. Yeah. Well, Wonderful. I, I feel inspired. So do I. Frankly. Uh, uh, and do you, but do you feel confident about Wednesday? Yes, I'm confident, but I think he will be clinical about it. He won't be emotional about yeah. it. He deals with every situation in a serious manner. Having said that, by the way, he's got a great sense of humour <laughs> and really good for a night out. <laughs>